Hi, welcome back. It's Lionel, Tech Lead and Partner at Westfault. And today we are talking about what is the difference between a $500 website and a $5,000 website. Now, recently I've been going on and actually running a marketing campaign. So we're pulling in all sorts of different kinds of leads, right? And I normally don't get the chance to interact with people actually uh, working with a budget of about $500. Usually if you want to work with Westfall, it's a referral. We deal with people who know what they want and there's a certain level of quality that they're expecting. And we're normally working with people with some background, probably a CTO or something like that. And they don't norm I don't normally have this chance to interact with the customers. But recently we've been getting a few of these low end customers and they always ask a couple of questions. They have a budget around 5,000, uh, sorry, $500. And if they're even listening, right, they want to know the difference between $500 and $5,000. So I thought I'll do a video here so that you guys can get a good idea about it. I know a lot of you guys are thinking like, Hey, I'm working on these things. How come I don't get those rates? Now, maybe you'll be able to understand this a lot better. Now, let's talk about the difference between the 500 and the 5,000, right? So first off the bat will be the software itself. So if you're talking about $500 product, right? How much can you actually spend on the software? And the answer is it's probably going to be open source. It's probably going to be something that you're downloading for. You cannot spend anything. So just to give you a comparison, right? If you did a craft CMS, like what we are usually doing, just the licensing fee is $299. But before I talk about that, let's talk about what about open source and why don't I like open source and what are the issues with open source? The main thing about open source is that you cannot expect support. They're not making any money. So if you have a bug or issue, it may not be fixed. The vendor himself, May have to figure out what's going on there's no one you can really call open source has this idea that you know it's buyer beware or use at your own risk and as a firm developing this kind of stuff i cannot afford this stuff i need that support i need to call the vendor the guy who built the software right and say hey do you have these solutions i need to fix this now remember we're talking about five thousand dollars here not fifty thousand for the custom so that is the first most important thing about, there's no support there. So this guy is gonna to have to give you something open source and when they run into a problem, he's not gonna have that budget to go and solve it for you. You're gonna run into those issues. Number two about open source is that there's always a performance issue because they're not making any money. That is why you see a lot of installations that yes, they claim to be a little bit faster, but as time goes by, it goes a bit slower. It's never optimized because you need to have an ongoing budget of developers doing this kind of stuff. <laughs> You're not going to get the quality if you don't have money. And the worst thing, the worst thing I hate is that after you make this investment in this software, you know, it's happened one or twice that the thing is completely defunct because no one's making any money on that. So a commercial solution is the best uh, option long term. You want the support, you want the reliability, you want a team of people whose livelihoods depend on that product being great. And that's the first difference. If you're 500 over here, you can't get that. That software has no support, no idea whether it's gonna work. And the worst thing is a bug that comes up, it's happened, and nobody knows what it is because I don't have the time for that budget to go and troll through this stuff. My team doesn't have the time. The vendors are not interested. It could be you know one month, it could be six months, it could be 12 months, it could be never when they fix that thing. Uh, fully paid commercial software, you know, you bring up the issues, support's pretty good, they have to do it because they are in business. So that's the first difference. You've got to take note, what's the difference? Are they running commercial software? Are they running open source? The second one is time, right? You've seen these examples online when people draw uh, anime characters and the one for one minute is completely different, the one for 10 minutes and the one for uh, you know, 10 hours, it's just completely different in terms of the way of things look. Now, if a vendor is providing you a $500 solution, how much time can they afford to spend on you? Could they spend it on discussing stuff with you? Could they spend it with actually doing the code? The answer is no, it's gonna have to be pretty cookie cutter, pretty fast, pretty chip chop. That's the way they can do it. Compare that to the difference of 
the guy who's gonna spend one hour or 10 hours and you'll see there's a whole bunch of difference. Same skill person, a different amount of time. Software is the same. If someone's like, I had a client ask the same uh, question and he understood. He said, why did these guys come up with Kuka Kata three to five pages? I needed more stuff inside. The answer is because there's no budget. They have to go quickly. It has to be chop, chop, same thing. And if it doesn't fit, it just doesn't fit. That's it. They cannot afford to put on more time. Now, the second point of this one is staff quality. So a lot of vendors will be talking to you and say, yeah, yeah, you know, look for $500, we still have the best, we have all these things, but you have to understand what the market is doing, right? If someone is making, charging $500, if they're doing it themselves very soon, they're gonna find themselves out of business. They're not making enough money, they're not covering enough costs, and they find that maybe they can get a higher paying job somewhere. And that to me is very disruptive, especially if you've got that budget, you know, you just hired this guy, they've done the work, and then they've left. They said, look, I have to get another job, and no one's servicing you, they're using something that's, you know, cookie cutter, no vendor wants to take care of it. That is a major problem. So same level of quality, they're very soon they're leaving. If the guy belongs to a company, right, it's the same thing. The staff are gonna keep turning and keep churning. They're gonna go away and you get worse and worse and worse until you're done with a you know complete beginner or maybe no one's even servicing it, you know? So this has happened, a lot, a lot of clients have reported this. You know, we just had a, um, a deal come in for Strappy and we said, look, hey, you know, yes, it is a simple low code solution, but we don't do it. You're not gonna be, there's not much money in it. We are not gonna build the technical skills for it. No one can help you down there, even though it's so simple and there's no point for us. Same thing, the vendor started, it was a freelancer, he left. And what happens is that they actually have end up hiring someone in-house, doing that stuff, that person changes and just there for the experience and you get this quality uh, recycling going on. Your software is not getting any better. So quality of developers will make a big difference. I think short term, you can probably get away with the one guy who was so talented just starting up, but long term, they're gonna leave, you're gonna go down and down and down. That is the reason why top end firms, we don't wanna mess with this kind of stuff. I don't want to have developers go in and turn around. It's bad for morale, it's bad for the clients. I want a good stable solution and I don't mind paying for it. And the clients who approach me, they understand they don't mind paying for it. So that's the difference between your 500 to the 5,000. So the last point I wanna talk about is of course the different kind of firms that you're dealing with. So what kind of support? So if you're talking about a freelancer, right? You gotta know that he is probably doing everything himself. He's probably overworked. He's doing marketing, he's doing the accounting, he's doing all this kind of stuff. Can he really get a budget out of that 500, you know? He would have to be so fast. If he's spending one hour talking to you, he's probably not making money. So a lot of these guys actually end up going out of business. When you talk, when you talk about firms, usually you're talking to the salesperson who is probably over-promising and they're gonna under-deliver because it's $500. They wanna get that business in. So one of the misconception strategies that some firms do is bringing in people at a low price and then charging later on. You'll see it's pretty common strategy. We use that, uh, not we, but the industry uses it for uh, all the open source software, right? You come in, it's free. Once you want the plugins, they're 100 to 150 US dollars. Uh, just had one come in. And not, I'm not saying anything wrong about the 150 US dollar plugins. I mean, they have to make money, but your expectation is you started free and now it's starting to get more and more expensive and it's very fast catching up to the $5,000. So one of these things is that a lot of these people come in for the 500, they're very disappointed because, you know, it seems that the custom cost keeps going up. They want to plug in here. They want to plug in there. Long-term cost is going to keep building uh, based on the quality of your software. So my opinion is that if you start with a good base, right, when it's well coded, it takes less long term to run this stuff, less deployment cost, less debugging, less um, friction, more speed, 
because of the better base. And you can think about this as uh, you buying a, a more expensive car that is well engineered versus something like a lemon secondhand that has been in an accident. You know, that maintenance cost is gonna start overwhelming you. So these are the difference between the $500 and the $5,000 differences. And they make a difference, you know, in terms of not just on the sticker price, but the long-term pricing. So after the first one, uh, there's more additions. You're probably going to see the two catching up very, very quickly. So I hope this has given you guys an insight into how this is working. I don't expect people to suddenly go from 500 to 5,000, but at least have in mind what the differences are so that when you're looking out for these services and you're working with vendors, you know what to expect. And that's the bottom line because the tech lead said so.